Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to make sure your mind stays here. Notice where you feel the process of breathing in the body and focus your attention there. And then ask yourself if it's comfortable. You can try long breathing for a while and then shorter breathing. Heavier, lighter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. To try to see what kind of breathing, feel, breathing feels best for the body right now. It gives your mind a good place to stay. When the mind has a good place to stay, then the actions that things are doing tend to be better. When your mind feels threatened, when it feels irritated, feels constrained, it tends to lash out. When you have a sense of well-being, then it's easier to think about the well-being of others than try to think of actions that lead to well-being, both for you and for the people around you. It's easier to think of the long term as well. There are people who have to, in the Thai phrase, you look for your food in the morning and eat it in the evening. In other words, you don't have everything saved up. It's hard to think about the long term. All you can think about is the immediate next meal. But if you're well fed and have a good store of food, then you can think about the long term. And so giving the mind a good place to stay like this is like feeding it well and giving it a good store of food, a sense of well-being that it can then carry into the rest of your life so that your actions do become more skillful, because this is what we depend on. We're born into this world. We don't have much to bring with us, but we do have the actions of the past that we bring. And they provide for the circumstances in which we're born. And then if we're not careful, we just use them up. And by the time it comes to go, then we don't have much left. And who knows what we're going to be prepared for the next time. But if we've been generous, if we've been observing the precepts, in other words, acting in ways that don't harm anybody, and we've been meditating, and those have been creating good karma, meritorious karma, then we at least have some sense of security as to where we're going to go. So birth and death go together. But it's, what's really important is what happens between. That's the karma you create. That's going to be your mainstay. We've got the good karma to be born as human beings, to have met Buddhism in this lifetime. Make sure you don't just eat that up. Make sure that you continue creating the good actions. As for people who have passed away, can we do good and we dedicate the merit to them? We hope they're in a position where they can acknowledge that and benefit from it. But the important thing is what we're doing right now, the goodness that we're creating. And the fact that we want to share it with someone else, that's even more goodness. So you try to develop these qualities, and above all, try to keep meditating, getting the mind under your control, so that whatever good things we have in this lifetime and the next time we'll learn how to use them well, because that's the point of meditation, is to make the mind wise. Give it a good place to stay, give it good things to think about as to what's worthwhile and what's not worthwhile. And you're more likely to benefit yourself and benefit the people around you, both now and on into the long term. Because when you've got wisdom, then even if you're poor, you can do good things with what little you have. If you're rich, your riches don't turn around and destroy you. We've seen so many cases of this. People get wealthy, they get powerful, and they forget themselves. And they use their wealth and use their powers in ways that harm other people, and then of course that comes back to harm them. But if you've been developing the, the wisdom that the Buddha teaches, in other words, not just borrowing his wisdom, but also developing your own in line with his wisdom, then whatever situation you find yourself in, you'll be able to, to, th to thrive, to prosper. Because you know what's doing, what's, what's worth doing, what's not worth doing. What's the best use for the things you have? So that even if you only have a little bit, you can get a lot out of it. If you have a lot, you can get a lot more. So on a day like this, when we're making merit for a newly born child, at the same time we're making merit for another person who's passed away, it's good to think about what lies between birth and death. And to be heedful. In the Thai tradition, in the 
scholarly tradition in Thailand, when they talk about merit making for someone who's passed away, they say that it is awa mang mangala, something that's inauspicious. But that's not the Buddhist point, point of view. The Buddhist point of view is anything that makes you heedful is auspicious. So if we're making merit today, it's good for our heedfulness and it becomes an auspicious occasion. As for the young, newly born child, it's also auspicious. The child's getting off to a good start. But it's through our actions that we make sure that a good start turns into something that continues and arrives at a good finish. It depends on the goodness you do along the way. <laughs>